Now with 10. Tense moments for students and faculty as Taylorsville High School is forced into lockdown after a shot was fired in the parking lot. Plus, it's a part of revitalizing the downtown. Uh, there's many different aspects to come at this. There's uh, efficiency, uh, there's, there's safety, there's four different rail crossings that would be closed by rerouting the tracks underground. The first ever in-person event tonight for the Rio Grande plan in Salt Lake City. And the Justice Department saying it brought down a massive scheme to sell fraudulent nursing credentials. Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. Welcome to ABC4 News at 10. I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Emily Flores. We thank you for joining us. Tonight, police continue to work to figure out who fired a gun outside of a high school while school was in session. Now, the gunfire forcing Taylorsville High into a lockdown. A number of individuals taken into custody. But tonight, police say they are still searching for others involved. ABC4's Courtney Johns joining us live from Taylorsville with the latest. Courtney. Yeah, Emily, this is where police think it happened. They say it started with a fight with one person shooting off at least one round. Now, fortunately, no one was injured, but the district tells us this isn't the only incident that they've dealt with recently. We've had several instances lately where uh, we're able to see how some of our protocols work and function. Ben Horsley with the Granite School District says in another incident, they had to deal with recently involved a fake threat against an elementary school. Police say today's incident started with a fight in the parking lot between a 15 and 17 year old. They say at least one shot went out before everyone ran off. Shortly after this, the school went into a lockdown and we talked to a student who was there when it happened. He says he felt relatively safe during the lockdown, but it does make him a little nervous when he thinks about what happened in his own parking lot. If there's like these two friend groups or something that were beefing and then they start to beef again at the school and then so an actual gunfight actually does happen because of what happened earlier today. The district is providing crisis counselors for students who request it moving forward. And as for this case, police say they have taken three people into custody, but they are still looking for three others. Reporting live in Taylorsville, Courtney Johns, ABC4 News. Courtney, thank you. An incredible sight in Salt Lake County today. A massive elk herd near the mouth of Parley's Canyon. We last saw the elk crossing Foothill in Salt Lake City. That was earlier this afternoon. State wildlife experts were encouraging drivers to avoid that area near Foothill and Parley's Way. Look at them go as they tried to relocate the herd. The latest update is that they've moved back up into the mountains. But if you do see elk in town, make sure to call the Division of Wildlife Resources. All right, those elk were safe. We want them to be yeah. safe, but it's so beautiful to see them so close to home. It is, but also a dangerous situation know, for them. But I you know. you can't blame them. They're looking for food. They're looking for food. Alana? That means a lot of snow is up there in the high country, so they have to come lower, right? right. We're going to mm -hmm. add snow to the mix, so more snow on the way. Those elk doing what they can. Glad they were safe, but snow happening right now. Live look from Logan, Cache Valley, showing the snow coming down. They're sitting in the 20s in Cache Valley, and this live look at Logan showing the snow accumulating pretty quickly. We've got very cold surface temperatures and as a result, getting sticky with the snow and icy conditions are expected. So coming down right now in Cache Valley and it's going to continue as we roll into the overnight. Looks like it's rapidly accumulating there. As I mentioned, 20s in Logan. We're freezing in other portions of the Wasatch Front. That includes Provo and Ogden Salt Lake. Just at 33, we were sitting at 34 for several hours eventually. We will drop down, but increasing cloud cover keeping us right around 33, 38 in St. George. Let's take a look on the storm tracker radar, show you where that snow is. And you can see it's filled in in the mountains, and we are holding on to that as well as Cache Valley. So light snow coming down right there near the state line. We also have had reports of freezing fog, so we know that there are patchy conditions out there, and you've got to just be really careful. That goes for tomorrow morning as well, the sweeping radar picking up that light snow at this hour. It is going to increase as we get through our Friday. That area of high pressure, that's going to break down. The clouds on the move that have moved into central and eastern Utah, and now the moisture has arrived. This storm system is prompting a brand new 
winter weather advisory. This is for the northern portion of the state and the high country. We know that our mountains north of I-80 will be picking up a decent accumulation of snow as the system comes through. We'll talk about how much and how much valleys should expect coming up in my full forecast in just a few moments. Glenn, Emily, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Alana. Well, now at 10, controversy in Utah's Cottonwood Canyons. Dozens of members of the public rallying against a draft of a Wasatch transportation plan that could push plans for a gondola in Little Conwood Canyon forward. Now, the Wasatch Front Regional Council listening to public comments from activists, outdoor recreators, and community members today. Some say moving forward with the gondola would be a mistake and one that could be irreversible for Utah's environment. Government and groups like you should be creating solutions to make people less dependent on cars, deploying electric buses and thinking systemically so people can get around without emitting carbon. In the meeting, the council made clear including UDOT's recommendations for transportation like the gondola does not mean there are plans to fund it. The draft is available for more public comment starting tomorrow at WFRC.org slash public comment. Utah skiers and snowboarders seeing a little bit of traffic relief today. The new ski buses are running in the Cottonwood Canyons to help reduce traffic jams for those trying to get to the ski resorts. ABC4's Caleb Baggerly with reaction from Big Cottonwood Canyon. Cottonwood Connect kicks off today. I've spoken with a few skiers and snowboarders that say traveling up the canyons has been a bit of a headache, but they're hoping that something like this can help. The, the traffic is unbelievable on busy days, weekends and snowy days. Long lines and long waits is what many say they've had to deal with when traveling to big and little Cottonwood Canyons, especially as the need for more transportation increased after UTA had to cut back on service in the canyons due to a driver shortage. But now, with the launch of Cottonwood Connect, which will provide additional shuttle services, there could be some relief. This is a really big development. It's a major feat for us. Uh, it's something that we were all collaboratively working with UTA and Salt Lake County and the resorts to pull together really quickly. This happening after the Salt Lake County Council voted to allot over $200,000 for additional shuttle services earlier this month. It's funded in part by Visit Salt Lake, UTA, and several resorts. Visit Salt Lake says they hope it will lead to more solutions going forward. We hope that this will help. I really view this as a pilot program for what this could look like moving forward. Again, it's not going to be the end all be all solution, but what it gives us is it allows us to start looking at micro transit options that could be really beneficial in the future. The service comes in the form of many coaches and large passenger vans provided by Snow Country Limousine. Areas being serviced include Cottonwood Heights, Midvale and Sandy, with stops at hotels and park and ride lots. Some of those headed up the canyons today say they hope it can make a difference when it comes to traffic. Yeah, more mass transit up these canyons, less cars on the road. Services will be available Thursday through Sunday as well as holidays. Passengers will need to make a reservation online and pay a $10 round trip fee. Reporting from the mouth of Big Cottonwood Canyon, Kayla Baggerly, ABC4 News. New at 10, in an article by the Washington Post today, the FDA saying they will ease the blood donation ban on gay and bisexual men in monogamous relationships. Further saying they will no longer be forced to abstain from sex to donate blood under federal guidelines. This to be proposed in coming days. The planned re relaxation of restrictions by the FDA follows years of pressure by blood banks, the American Medical Association, and LGBT rights organizations to abandon rules some experts say are outdated homophobic and ineffective. Around this time last year, former member of Salt Lake City Council, Derek Kitchen, held a capital blood drive hoping to reduce the stigma against gay and bisexual men donating blood. The first ever in-person event tonight for the Rio Grande plan in Salt Lake City. The plan is a blueprint for how to develop a safer, more sustainable, better connected and more desirable downtown. A group called Friends of the Rio Grande saying this all centered around the historic Rio Grande Depot and that as Salt Lake City grows, the plan is a way to prepare for continued growth and further infrastructure needs, while at the same time saving taxpayers millions. Long term, my, my goal and hope is that something, you know, maybe not exactly this plan, but something like it can eventually get built. I think for tonight, uh, my hope is that uh, we can widen our support base. 
So the plan is to bring back the beauty of the train station we once knew years ago. It includes a large concrete box dugout of the ground big enough to hold full size trains among other things. They say going underground will make room for housing units, businesses and recreational opportunities to be built on city blocks. And the income from development, they say, will cover the cost of construction, essentially paying for itself. Coming up, the FBI seizes a website of a notorious ransomware gang known as Hive. More from Washington with those details. And the Justice Department saying it brought down a massive scheme to sell fraudulent nursing credentials More on what investigators found after the break. Plus, this is what it looked like at Sundance today. Sunshine and look at all that snow. We're going to add snow to the mountains and the valleys. The great picture there of Salt Lake, even though we were clouded in and dealing with inversion. We've got a storm on the way. Active skies return the timeline in Utah's most accurate forecast.